Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the Congress of the United States, I'm very sad to join Senator Feinstein and others who are here joining the official family of our community to bring sympathy and condolences to Anita, to Brianna, to Tanya, and to the entire family. When we learned during the night of Ed Merley's passing, it was so shocking for all of us. We met that morning in our usual Democratic Caucus meeting. Barbara Lee came forward, who's here today, and she presented to our caucus our sad loss. Jackie Spear and I were there crying too much to even speak. Jackie, Barbara had the composure. But then many members of the House of Representatives joined in a congressional record statement singing the praises of this great man, Ed Lee, so that everyone who followed the workings of Congress would know the esteem in which he was held. Kamala Harris is here, and we also were joined in our uh, singing the praises of Ed Lee by our Congressional His uh, Asian Pacific Caucus and Maisie Hirano. Senator Hirano is here representing not only the Senate, but that caucus. So the full value of who he was, what his legacy is and the difference he made will be there forever for everyone to see. So we gather here heartbroken, heartbroken. And in this, uh, I didn't know this until now, but it's fitting that we gather in this, of course, glorious building beneath the rotunda inscription, which says, San Francisco, O glorious city of our hearts, that has been tried and not found wanting, go thou with like spirit to make the future thine. That was what Ed was about. He was hardworking, he was hopeful, he dreamed of securing San Francisco's position as a dynamic, innovative model for the nation, and so many mayors are here, the mayor of Denver, the mayor of Oakland, the mayor of San Jose, many of our previous mayors who have been referenced. Mayor Lee's decade of service to our city, more than a decade, leaves a, an enduring, inspiring legacy that generations of San Franciscans will enjoy. So, so many times the reporters have said to many of us, when was the last time you saw him? And for many of us in this room, the last time we were really with him for a long period of time was the interfaith breakfast right before Thanksgiving. And it was one of those times when Ed spoke from the heart so beautifully as he always did, but he was connecting. He connected that morning on the subject of homelessness and promised to take 1,000 people off the streets this winter, and the crowd was so with him. They were people he had worked with over the years. Many of you are here. Certainly, Bishop Andrus was there. And then to see him up here, when they unfly, uh, uh, and he always had that smile. He smiled when he talked about it, gave you confidence, gave you hope that it would happen. He smiled and connected when in plural, the LGBT flag, the rainbow flag, right before the march. He smiled when we went to Youth Build. We talked about housing and homelessness. We talked about civil rights. We talked about education, which was so important to him. He smiled when we went, and that means lifetime learning. When we went to Youth Build, where these kids with the members of unions who were there to train young people into professions tasked by the private sector so they would have jobs. He smiled when he when Chamber was debuted here because he saw the importance of the arts of bringing people together. He took pride in his own heritage and bringing his heritage and the arts together here, but also taking it to China, seeing how that would be bonding the pride he took in his Asian American heritage, his Chinese American heritage, enabled him to see the pride that others took in theirs. And so that increased his appreciation for what his challenge was in this country, well, in the city, but as a model to the country to bring people together. Every subject that he was involved in, he smiled, he connected whether it was housing, cutting ribbons at housing events, 
whether it was youth field, wherever it was, when it was time to take the official photo, people would say, where's Ed? Where's the mayor? The mayor was listening. He was listening. He was connecting with the people who were affected by it all. Such dignity, such humility, such humility for this great man. It's really a, a terrible, terrible loss for us, but we have to appreciate the time that we did have with him. I'll share one story that he appreciated because, you know, when you're appointed and you're doing the job and Senator Feinstein um, spelled it out so clearly, it's one thing. But when you get in the arena to run, it's another story. Uh, Governor, you know that. When you're a candidate, it's another story. So I, was, I told him this story, which we, he laughed. I'll tell you. There was this African Presbyterian bishop in Africa, and he posted this statement on the wall of a hospital there. Some nun sent me this story, which those of you who have ever run for office or had an official position can identify with. And on it it said, one day when I happily, when I leave this life and I happily go to meet my maker, he will say to me, show me your wounds. And if I have no wounds, he will say, was nothing worth fighting for? Well, our dear Ed, he can show his wounds because so much was worth fighting for. And he can show them with a smile and with great pride. And as the Ecclesiasticus has said, and when it, when it has the uh, version that says, now let us praise great men, the people will tell of his wisdom and the con congregation will continue to sing his praise. Anita, Tanya, Brianna, the entire family, thank you for sharing Ed with all of us. Thank you for sharing him with the world. In his honor, our congressional delegation has a flag flown over the Capitol in his name just hours after we got the news of his passing. Here he was from an immigrant family, flag flown over the Capitol, dignitaries gathered uh, to sing his praises, but he'd be most interested in what the people he worked for. He knew that a measure of his success, or any public figure's success, was not the honors received, but the difference that he made in the lives of regular people in our community. I hope it is a comfort to all of you that so many people share your grief, mourn your loss, and are praying for you at this sad time. Everybody in this room loves San Francisco. Everybody in this room loves Ed Lee. Thank you.